These officers of the UK-based Allied Rapid Reaction Corps are dealing with a critical situation that requires immediate action. An insurgent has been spotted and the operations team takes the decision to act quickly. We identified a high-value individual that uh, we have uh, been trying to target. Um, they're deep behind enemy lines, um, intelligence suddenly got a, a, a cue uh, and we're able to um, vector an aircraft to go and strike it. The officers are taking part in a two-week command exercise dubbed Arcade Fusion. Some 2,500 personnel from 16 NATO and partner nations are running a war from this giant tent camp in Cornwall. They're simulating commanding the NATO response force and its land, sea and air forces. The exercise scenario is designed to prepare them for a wide spectrum of potential missions anywhere in the world. The likelihood is you're dealing with a country post-conflict or a country where there is some sort of civil dispute between um, various different ethnic groups. So you have to practice that complexity of dealing with the individual tribes, nation, nations, individual races within a country, understanding the political dynamics and then dealing with some of the military activity that's likely to be taken by insurgent groups. Arcade fusion is played out mainly behind computer screens. The action is simulated. But when this role player launches a simulated insurgent attack, the officers who must deal with it are under real pressure to get the response right. A scenario like this, which is run on a computer simulation, challenges us through, you know, through inputs to make decisions, and that's what this headquarters does. It makes decisions, it prioritizes resources, and it does so looking at a theater perspective. That's something that uh, really requires this type of exercise to do. A milestone has been marked in Titan as a ceasefire was signed between NATO and the Titan and Caymanese armies. Regular mock newscasts also add to the realism of the scenario. Simulating the role and effects of the media is an integral part of the exercise, as is the inclusion of civilian development experts or political advisors who are key to any conflict resolution. Really important that as we start drawing down in Afghanistan to learn the lessons that we've had from a decade of fighting, and here on this exercise we've got 16 nations who have fought and operated together, and therefore we're now looking ahead to the future to see what the future operations look like, but making sure we've taken lessons from the past. The ARC has been deployed to Bosnia, Kosovo and twice to Afghanistan. It's one of seven NATO rapid deployable corps that can be called upon to lead the NATO response force. This exercise has been a major test for the ARC to prove it's ready to do its job at a critical time when the Alliance is keen to maintain its capabilities and cohesion gained in two decades of operations. Increasingly the Alliance will move to uh, an alliance that is ready rather than an alliance that is committed. Uh, and uh, exercises like this demonstrate the capability of the Alliance in responding to those challenges. I'm Mike Mühlberger reporting for the NATO Channel from RAF St. Morgan in England.